Today is Less Survivable Cancer Awareness Day. Less survivable cancers make up a quarter of cancer cases in the UK. Pancreatic cancer is one of the most deadly cancers. And today, I'm joined by Bryony Thomas, who was diagnosed in 2019, told that her life expectancy was just 12 weeks. Bryony has beaten the odds and now is campaigning with her MP, Siobhan Bailey, to raise awareness. I'm delighted to welcome both to the show today. Siobhan, I'm going to start with you. Um, tell me how you first started working with Bryony. So Pancreatic Cancer UK did a campaign day and involved um, MPs from across the house to try and tell us about the, a drug called PERT, uh, which is not, it's not, it's not, um, it's not given out enough uh, as far as we're concerned for people who are suffering from pancreatic cancer or who are, have survived it. So they wanted to raise awareness and within that they, they brought me in touch with my constituent, Bryony, who, as you will see in a moment, is a complete inspiration. I was totally gripped uh, by her story to a point where I didn't, I didn't want to stop the conversation. So on a personal level, Bryony and I are a similar age, we're mums, you know, and, and I had actually no idea. I'd always, always thought that pancreatic cancer was very much an older person's uh, mm. I I issue, so that, that really upset me, and I started investigating. And then on a professional level, this is a cancer that's con it's, it's known as the silent cancer. Uh, there hasn't been improvement in survival rates for 40 years, um, so I've raised the, uh, raised the issue in the House uh, with the leader of the House, Jacob Rees-Mogg. He actually encouraged us to campaign on this, so that's what we're doing. Good. Brian, tell me about the moment that you were diagnosed in 2019 and how that conversation went about your prognosis. Yeah, well, like um, half of pancreatic cancer patients, I ended up being diagnosed on acute admission to hospital, even though I'd been going to see my GP with vague symptoms for five years. On the day that I was diagnosed, I'd been there for four days. I was going increasingly yellow, um, looked like Marge Simpson, um, trying to keep up my sense of humour. And um, the doctor came in with two women I didn't recognise. One had a purple uniform on and my stomach sank. My husband was with them and Dr Griffiths says, we've found, we found a mass in your pancreas. We think it's cancer and it might be operable. And it was the word might. might. And I swore and I said, that's the one you don't want, isn't it? Yeah. And um, my husband and I looked at each other and we, the thing is we weren't surprised. You know, the, uh, the Spike Milligan, I told you I was ill. I told you I was ill. You know, for five years, I'd been to my GP with fatigue, with bloating, with, um, with kind of just low-level lethargy and lack of vitality, um, all sorts of these small issues that didn't get added up into cancer. Goodness me. Goodness me. The good news is you are still here. Yes. Tell us why. Well, I'm one of the only one in 10 people who are offered potentially curative surgery. By the time most people get um, to the point of being diagnosed, it's too late. And there is a reason for that. That This was the size of my tumour when I was operated on. Walnut. Your whole a thing. walnut. And this is, um, if this were on your body, you'd feel it. When it's in your body, you don't. Right. It can, this would have been there for nearly seven years before I was diagnosed. And so because you can't feel it, you need to be alert to small symptoms, things like looking into the toilet. You can't feel your breasts, you can't yeah. feel it on your testes. What you can do is look in the toilet and understand what your poo should look like. Right, uh, what are the warning signs? Um, pale floating poo. Right. So peanut butter coloured or lighter, right. you've got a problem. Doesn't flush away, you've got a problem. And yeah. so if that happens regularly and for more than two weeks, see your doctor, and if it persists, you persist too. What we found is, unfortunately, even some doctors don't like to talk about poo. They'll talk about sort of tummy troubles or yeah. stool and, you know, and actually language that doesn't really get to the nub of the issue or ask the right questions. I'm actually the perfect MP for Bryony. I've got a toddler. You know, <laughs> when, you are, when you have a baby, you're taught to look at wheeze and poos and, and actually it's an indication of health. But as we grow up, that, that isn't. So it, it's going to be part of the awareness raising. It might be uncomfortable for some people, but it is going to be part of, uh, of what Bryony is trying to achieve with telling people about the symptoms. Tell us about what's in that pot. What's in the pot? 
So this is PERT. This is pancreatic enzyme replacement treatment. Never heard of it. Um, and if I don't take this every day, I will waste away. This is what I take every day. It's around 60 tablets every single day. And without that, I can't process fat and I can't process protein and I would waste away. You take how many? About 60 tablets every day. 60 tablets? Depending on what I'm eating. Really? And this is only diagnosed to half of pancreatic patients. I see them just there. I can see them on the screen. So it's, it's to half of pancreatic Yes. Why? Well, if you are operable like me, then you end up with a specialist centre. You end up getting the right help. You get dietetic support. Usually it's inconsistent across the country. If you're not operable, often you don't end up with a specialist. You're not prescribed what you need. And inoperable patients not prescribed with this will mean they can't be more than 20 minutes away from a the toilet. They can't go out for fear of soiling themselves. This is really distressing. And if that is palliative care, when we're trying to give people the dignity in dying, is there anything more indignant than, you know, what more indignity can you have than making someone not have the medication that means that they don't soil themselves? Brian, I just want to say, before I go to Siobhan, I can completely see why Siobhan said that she could have listened to you and continued the conversation. Mm. You're, I'm hanging off your every word. You have a brilliant way of communicating. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Siobhan, how are we going to get everyone who needs it to get so, this film? So, obviously, Bryony is a, just a natural asset in terms of media, and we're going to be doing quite a big uh, awareness-raising campaign. We'll be seeking a debate in Parliament. just to, And, I, and I, I'm really at the beginning of the discussions with ministers about this, because I've got a lot more investigation to do to understand why we haven't had this improvement on survival rates, to understand why, when there are um, 28 people a day dying of pancreatic cancer and 31 people a day dying of breast cancer, it's breast cancer that is always talked about is the research funding that's going yeah. in, into that and you know not that I would want to take that away that oh. isn't the case so research funding it's awareness it's education you know from schools upwards uh, whether there can be this support package uh, for people with with the cancer and also when they've survived it and so uh, and I, I think there are some guidelines in terms of the nice guidelines already mm -hmm. in place Bryony believes pancreatic cancer UK believes that that can be improved um, so I'll be working with the ministers uh, to, to, to see what we can do. But, you know, I'm really encouraged and I'm very, very grateful uh, to Bryony and her family for, for giving this time. And you know, I imagine you, you've got an awful lot to do um, in your life and you didn't expect to be doing this, but it is, it's very helpful for others. you got a good advocate there. Uh, absolutely. We'll be, we'll be making good use. <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting, isn't it? It does demonstrate why some people who are watching this will, will think if some, they've got a problem in their life or an issue that they want to raise... Um, they, they probably wouldn't think about getting involved with their MP, but it, but it can really work, can't it? Absolutely. Abs I mean, I've, I, I had a post in a patient group this morning with someone who has yet again had their Whipple cancelled, their potentially curative operation cancelled during these mm. you know, very difficult times. This is the third time it's been moved or, um, or postponed. And I said, have you contacted your MP? And it hadn't occurred to them to do so. And so, you know, just as I say, go to your doctor, go to your doctor, go to your MP, go to your MP. These people are there to help you if you ask. Yeah. Yes, very. And grateful to GB News for doing things like this, because it's mainly negative stuff about politicians, yeah. but actually this is our day job and, 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 and trying Absolutely. to help. Absolutely, it is. And I think and that's why know, I wanted to do it, because MP. people don't see the constituency work that actually is much more fulfilling than yep. anything you can do in Parliament, in, in my view. Now, Bryony, you've got a little girl. I do. Every day is precious. Um, you're, you're now rebuilding your life and your business. Tell, tell me about Yes, today. I have a 10-year-old daughter um, and she's hoping to share the clip with her friends. Um, yes, life and business, we've moved to Stroud. Um, now Siobhan is my MP. And my business, I was saying to Siobhan, um, just um, probably a month on from where I was in December 2019. And next week, we are starting to develop software in my business, which I'm really excited about. That is wonderful. Where next works for you in terms of the campaign? So for me in the campaign, I will be setting up a campaign called Clue in the Loo. And yes, you can hashtag Clue in the Loo. I'm currently setting up the website and gaining support for getting people to understand that checking their breasts, checking their testes and checking the toilet is important.